Well, good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the carving shop, and this will be session four of carving a Drake Woody. And uh, in session three, we worked on detailing the head. I do have a few additional details. Sometimes you think about things overnight, and uh, I want to add a few more cheek details. And I do want to go ahead and, and put a little carving on the crest of this bird. So we'll get that done before we move to the body. And in today's session, primarily we'll be roughing out the body and getting it ready for detailing. Hey, I want to thank those of you that subscribed. I'm encouraged by that. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do that. It helps me out. And that way you'll get notification of new content as I continue to add to the YouTube channel. So let's get busy on uh, finalizing the details on this head today and then getting to the body. I did want to show you, I took a little 150 grit sandpaper and you have to be very careful around the eyes because they will scratch with sandpaper. So I cover them up with my thumb and uh, it's a pretty quick job to blend out this epoxy putty. The other thing I did was uh, use the X-Acto knife to open things up a little bit, shape the eye opening. And you can also use this as a kind of a scraper. And I, I use that to round the edges of these this eye ring so that there are no sharp edges on that. It wants, we want it to be very soft and kind of fleshy looking after we get it painted. And uh, that's a good way to just kind of round off the edges. Now I'm going to fire up the uh, blower and uh, I want to put a few cheek indications here just to add a little bit of character to the face. And then uh, I mentioned I may do some crest uh, carving just a little bit to break this up a bit and uh, give it that loose feathery look after it's painted. I'm going to speed up the video. So this is two times and I'm using this bullet shaped ruby bit to go in and, and gouge out a cheek line. And then it's a great bit to shape and blend back in as well. So you use the tip to kind of gouge the line and then go both directions towards the front and then flip it around and blend it out towards the back. I'm making that a little deeper. I just want to cast a little shadow on the face and give it a little more character. It's kind of hard to see in this video, but I'll show it to you after we get it sanded, and uh, I think it just helps the look. So now I'm using the drum sander, just smoothing things out so that there are no trenches there. You just want to soften everything back up a little bit. Do some hand sanding then, places you can't get with the drum sander. And just notice I'm keeping my thumb over the eye just so I don't make a slip there and put a scratch on the eye. And I'll do that on both sides. You can see a little bit of a shadow there and that's what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna use the quarter inch cylindrical burr and go in and just cut some flow lines into that crest. I penciled some guidelines in, and this is twice speed, remember, so I'm not carving quite this fast. But you can see 
I'm using the burr here because I want to remove quite a bit of wood quickly. And then I'll go back in with some finer uh, bits and sandpaper and smooth everything out. But this, this gives me a quick flow line. I'm changing bits. I'm going to use that little cylindrical ruby bit to get into some of those rougher areas and smooth them up with that bit. And also put some uh, fine, more fine lines in the feather flow there to complement those deeper lines. Now I'm just going to have uh, a small piece of sandpaper, probably 120 grit, and fold that up and kind of soften everything up. That uh, burr leaves some rough wood and we don't want to leave any roughness in in those flow lines. And then some finished sanding with 320. All right, we've added a little more character of the face. You can see just some grooves back there and I'll sand a little bit more on that, but it gives us some texture in the crest and then uh, some of this cheek shaping I think has just given the bird a little bit more character. Okay I'm going to speed things up again here in the video and I've done some layout work and I'm using this three quarter inch bullet nose saber tooth burr fine grit or fine burr to begin to hog off wood. I discovered as I started uh, grinding on this, this is a pretty hard piece of Tupelo. It'll still work fine. It just takes a little longer with a harder piece. You can see the grain lines are very close in this piece of wood and there's some variation in the wood right there. You can see a darker section going across. So those just present additional challenges and slow you down a little bit. It doesn't mean it's a bad piece of wood and you get some variation. I just should have been a little more careful when I selected this piece of wood. So I'm gonna skip through this. I'm just going to be rounding the body in general, and I'll just give you some snapshots of that. Now I'm switching to the quarter inch cylindrical burr and I'm going to keep this in real time and not speed this up because uh, I've said this before, this burr is powerful and you really need to take your time. So I'm going to use it to take out this V area between the primaries and I'm just going to go very slow. It's a little easier in this direction. When I flip it around, you're going kind of against the grain and it's easy to snag that burr on that hard edge. It'll make you jump. Uh, so just keep a firm grip on things and go slow. And I'm just carefully removing wood from between the, uh, the primaries. Now I'll speed it up a little bit. I'm just gonna take that right down to where the tail meets down below. This is just the first step in defining the, the primaries. Okay, I've got that cut out and I'm switching to the three quarter inch cylindrical saber tooth burr. And I'm gonna use that hard edge to define this primary feather line. Now I'm gonna flip that around and being careful of that hard edge again, same concept here, go slow. And I have this at double speed, so you need to be slower than this. I'm just beginning to define those, uh, the crossed primaries with this big burr. It just does a lot of work quickly. If you're careful, it's a good efficient way to, to create separation between the primaries. And now I'll start angling that primary group. I'm taking that other side down to the tail and rounding that section.
Now I'm going to use that same burr to define the lower edge of the tail feathers. And I'm keeping this real time because again, this needs to be a slow, steady cut because you're kind of going against grain in this direction. Then I'm going to flip it over and work from the bottom to go ahead and define where the tail feathers are. Same thing on this other side. So we'll speed through that. Just doing some rounding and now I want to work on removing this material above the tail and I will change to the three quarter inch round bullet nose bit. And very carefully begin removing wood. And I'm going to take that down to the guideline that I've given myself on the side of the tail. I like this bullet nose bit because it's pretty forgiving and you can grind at different angles using the end of the bit like I'm doing there. And it gets into some tight spots. So I've ground down to that guideline I'll do the same thing on this side. Once I have those shaped up, then I can kind of round the body back into that area and remove more wood there. Just give you a close-up view of that. I was just showing how tight this grain is on this piece of wood. It's, it's pretty hard. Okay, we've got the body roughed out and rounded, and I didn't want to spend too much time on that uh, because we're basically taking off wood. Just a couple of notes. You're going for a pretty rounded shape at this point. We're going to do more shaping and more rounding when we put side pockets in and define where the back is. Uh, the other thing I want to note is the shape of the tail feathers of a wood duck. Very much in a cup shape and not much distinction between the tail coverts and the tail feathers. The tail feathers are fairly long, so you want to kind of go for this long cup shape look. And then we'll define some feather groups there. But on a lot of other decoys, I would carve those tail feathers in and put more definition between the culverts and the, the tail feathers. On the wood duck, not so much. All right, I've done the layout work on the side pocket locations and the cape location, both sides, using the dividers and the patterns. And I won't go through that whole process in this video. If you need to refer to that, take a look at the uh, Mallard Drake video or the uh, some of the others where I go through that entire process of how to lay out the decoy. I'm just trying not to repeat a lot of things uh, that people have already seen or can refer to in other places. So now we'll grind out this area and uh, get the cape defined and that'll pretty well finish the roughing of the body. Okay, I'm going to speed up the video and I'm using this three-quarter inch cylindrical uh, fine tooth burr and cutting back the side pocket to meet my guideline on top and on the side. Just go at this slowly and remove wood until I hit my guidelines on both the plan view and the side view. Then I can begin rounding from that point, once I know I'm in the right position 
heightwise and across the back. Now I'm going to round those side pockets and you really need to put some roundness in there. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake of leaving them too, too square and I'm just always a proponent for round everything as much as you can. Now I'm just digging in that lower area of the side pocket. It's just a quick definition there. Now switching around and rounding back towards the, uh, the scapulars and kind of cleaning things up as I go and continuing to round. I'm going to show this whole uh, sequence just so you can watch the, the rough carving of the body and the side pockets. You can refer to that. And again, this is at double speed, so it shouldn't take too long to get through this. Just doing that same thing on the far side. Hitting my guidelines and then going back and rounding things out. So another common mistake is people leave things real square across the back. And uh, it just detracts from the look and, and doesn't look natural. So big proponent of round. So now I'm cutting that side pocket in. I'm rounding it. Doing that little definition of the lower area of the side pocket. Now I'm going to work on the cape and I want to leave the cape high as it is and uh, dig down around it to put a little v-shape in the back feathers as it leads up to the cape and then I'm going to round the back of the cape a little bit so it's not a sharp point back there. Those cape feathers overlay the feathers of the back, so you want that a little higher. It's another common mistake. People dig those that cape area down deep and tend to want to leave like big muscles on either side of it, but that cape actually lays over and should be a little higher than the surrounding area. This is a double speed, but you can see it doesn't take too long to do this roughing of the back and the side pocket area. We're getting close to being done here. And that was the entire sequence of carving that. It's a nice round shape from the back. After I rough carve, then I'll just do a, a few quick symmetry checks with the calipers. And uh, using the pattern, make sure that side pockets are, you know, relatively close on either side. You can see the nice rounded shape of the body now. And the cape there. Starting to shape up. I think we'll call that a wrap on session four. We've got the body roughed out and ready to put some details on the body. We finished the head with a few more details that uh, I didn't get done in the last video. So I'll look forward to session five. See you then. Tom Christie signing out.